Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're going to talk about Bitcoin, and we're going to be providing an update to the bull market support band. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. Let's go ahead and jump in. So we have quite a bit to talk about this week. If you guys remember the last video we did on the bull market support ban, we said two main things about the likelihood as to whether we would close above it or whether Bitcoin would close below it. And it all came down, at least in my view, to the labor market, right? I think the, the markets are primarily concerned about that right now. The markets used to be primarily concerned about inflation, but I think it sort of shifted gears over to the labor market. And what we said a week ago was that if, if the labor market data came in strong this month, meaning, you know, the unemployment rate either stays flat or goes down um, and, and you get non-farm payrolls printing well above expectations, then it's more likely to get a weekly close above the bull market support ban. I mean, this is one of those things you have to take week by week, right? If, on the other hand, the labor market data came in weak, then it would probably make people very worried about that most recent rate cut by the Fed potentially coming a little bit too late. So because the labor market data came in fairly strong, as we talked about in the video that we did a couple of days ago, the expectation was that there is a higher likelihood that Bitcoin will actually close above its bull market support ban. And it has. Um, and, and we'll talk about, you know, the future implications, but it actually came really, really close. Um, the the 20 week SMA last week was at, let me see if I can get it here exactly, but the 20 week SMA last week was 62,742 and the close was 62,832. So just about $90 higher than the 20 week SMA. Again, I think the 20 week SMA is important. Also the 21 week EMA. Some traders use the SMA. Some traders use the EMA. They both have their advantages and disadvantages. The, the EMA is quicker to respond to price movements because it's an exponential moving average and it weights um, you know, more recent price movement heavier than older price movement. But the 20-week SMA, I, I think, is also very useful because there are times where you know, it'll it, it'll go below the 21 week EMA, but then hold the 20 week SMA as support, or it'll go below it'll you know go below the 20 week SMA and then hold the 21 week EMA as support. Right? There are times when that happens. Right? I mean, here's a great example where weekly close below the 20 week SMA, but on a weekly time frame, the 21 week EMA held. Um, but anyways, you know, just kind of going back to where we are right now, Bitcoin closed above the bull market support ban, which of course was the most likely outcome following the the very good labor market report now of course the question is is you know will those will that labor market report get revised in a couple of months you know what will what will the next two months bring and of course i mean you know <laughs> look at look at what bitcoin has done since march right i mean it's just been putting in lower highs and lower lows right but we also said back over here that the 2019 comparison had played out, right? You got your first low, you got a lower low, a lower low, and then a final lower low. So the 2019 comparison has has essentially played out at this point. The only question now is, you know, do we get a, a quote-unquote landing or not? Now, of course, at some point, we probably will get a landing, but the timing of that is honestly very difficult to predict. In the short term, there's a couple of things I think we need to look at with regards to Bitcoin. So I don't really put a lot of weight into shorter time frames, especially the videos that I do, because the videos that I do aren't really meant to care so much about what happens on an hourly basis or a daily basis. But the only reason I'll bring it up is because, there, again, there's two ways to look at this, right? And we talked about this, how, how it compared to 2019. There's two ways to look at it. The first way, right, the more optimistic way, and it's okay to be optimistic, right? I mean, as I've said before, right, the bears sound smart and the bulls make money. The more optimistic way to look at it is to say that Bitcoin is approaching this point from 2019, right? Um, so to just sort of draw that same comparison, you can see the sort of the top, 
there was sort of like a double top and then another test and then another test. And then it was finally here after about six or seven months, Bitcoin finally broke through. So you could argue that's your sort of your first double test, another test, another test. And then now we're sort of at that same point, right? So that is the optimistic way to view this. And you can't fault anyone for viewing the market that way, right? I mean, it certainly seems like a, a potential outcome here. Um, on average, October usually is a pretty good month. Counterpoint, of course, is September is usually a pretty bad month. In the last two years, September ended up being green, even though it's on average red. So that, I think, is what we first have to look at. So if Bitcoin reaches a very similar point, what what price would that correspond to, right? So let's just take a look here. If we connect the dots going back to March, where would that put the price of Bitcoin? I guess it's hard to know exactly how to connect it. Um, you know, do you connect these wicks there? Do you connect this one? But, you know, roughly speaking, it corresponds to approximately sixty nine dollars to $70,000 um, is sort of the line in the sand which is, is, is where that sort of that lower high structure would be. So if Bitcoin can really durably break above 70K, then you could argue that the lower high structure is broken. The last high occurred at $70,040.75. So that was the last high, the last, you know, major high. I know a lot of people are looking at it at some of sort of these local highs in here, but I'm not so much concerned about that as much as sort of the macro lower high structure that Bitcoin has been respecting, um, you know, ever since a month before the halving, right? So that, I suppose, is going to be, you know, the real resistance level that Bitcoin has to get through. And you can see that in 2019, after about six to seven months, Bitcoin got through it, right? It, it got through it just fine. So if Bitcoin can approach that in the next couple of weeks, that's going to be the, 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 the difficult part. And I'm not saying it can't get through. I mean, it's certainly possible for it to get through, as you can see it did over here in January 2020, about, you know, 29, 30 weeks after the downtrend began, right? So if you look at a, a date range here, it broke through about, yeah, about 31 weeks, I guess. I guess it depends on what you define as sort of how you draw the trend line. But, you know, if you look at it here, it's already about 30 weeks, right? So next week would be about 31 weeks. Um, so, yeah, I mean, absolutely, it makes sense to to, to follow that through. Uh, and we'll see. And we'll see if Bitcoin can hold the 20-week SMA. So this week, the 20-week SMA is at 62,511. The 21-week EMA is at 61,573. So if there is a pullback in the market, which there very well could be, we're going to get some you know interesting information this week. We're going to get CPI uh, in just a few days, so that obviously always you know can can affect the markets in the short term as the inflation data comes in. So we'll see where that comes, right? So I mean, that's essentially where you would want to see Bitcoin hold as support around the twenty-week SMA or the twenty-one week EMA. In the short term. The only real concern, I think, and again, I'm not saying that you should put more weight on this view than the other one. The only real concern, I think, in the short term is I would say there's a a, a, a chance, right, and, and maybe not even a greater than 50% chance, but there is a chance that rather than Bitcoin being at the break of the lower high structure, it could still be here. Right. And the only reason, the only reason I say it is because last cycle in 2019, the first rate cut occurred right there. Bitcoin rallied for two weeks. The next week was red and a pretty long wick down. And, you know, I mean, if you can imagine at some point the price of Bitcoin back then after this wick down was all the way down to like 9,500. But then by the end of the week, it was all the way back at, you know, almost 10,400 or so. So it actually rallied back about $1,000 before the end of the week. And then the beginning of the following week was green, right? And I mean, it would have looked like a pretty nice reversal. 
but the market, you know, Bitcoin still bled for approximately two more weeks. And then it got a nice move um, the following month, right? So again, it, it's difficult. I mean, I, I, t I tend to lean, um, you know, the, the time-based comparison is important. The monetary policy comparison is obviously important. Sometimes I lean towards one side over the other. I think as far as dominance goes, I definitely lean, lean towards monetary policy over anything else because we've seen that with Bitcoin dominance. For price action of Bitcoin USD, you can't deny the the time-based component of it and the cyclical nature of Bitcoin, right? So I think it makes sense to see if Bitcoin can just break through this lower high structure, um, kind of like it did, right? I mean, kind of like it did um, once upon a time over here in, in 2019. And then we, we figure out, you know, what sort of landing we might get. Uh, but that is is sort of the, the the first thing on the agenda, right? You know, is is Bitcoin at this point, or is it still way back over here? You know, following following the first rate cut. You know, here the first rate cut occurred right there. Bitcoin rallied two weeks. It sells off for a week. What happens this week, right? What happens this week? I think what happens this week will actually go a long way into finally answering the question. You know. Are we, you know, are we here or are we here? Now, the real answer to that question is neither. We are not in 2019 or 2020, believe it or not. We are in 2024. So it's probably going to play out somewhat differently, right? You know, it's probably going to play out somewhat differently. And and I, I don't really think it makes a lot of sense to assume it has to play out like this, right? I mean, if it breaks through, it doesn't mean you have to get a hard landing, um, or if it just gets rejected, it could just be another slightly lower low before then finally breaking out next year, right? If you think back to March, one of the things I said was it'll take about six to nine months, okay? And and it's been six, it's already been like seven months, and Bitcoin still hasn't taken out the all-time high. Um, so I'd say at least so far that six to nine month view has been very, very worthwhile, right? I mean, it's not, I mean, it's, I wouldn't say it's, you know, everything, right? But I mean, just saying half a year ago that the market might just trend down for six to nine months, um, six months minimum, nine months if it if it carries out what it did over here, I don't think that was very well received back then. But now, after we kind of look back on it, that's pretty much what's happened, right? I mean, it's been lower highs for the last six months, almost seven months now, and we are approaching the lower high structure once again. So what I would say is if this week, if this week is green, right? So if this week is green and Bitcoin can rally back up, right? If it can continue its rally and potentially get close to the lower high structure uh, in the high 60s, then I think it's more likely that we're here. If on the other hand, Bitcoin just kind of bleeds back down again. Maybe maybe the CPI data comes in bad, right, or, or something, and it and it's not what people are expecting. And then and then you know maybe the fear would be if if you know if let's say if the CPI data comes in very very hot, then people might fear that um, all these rate cuts that are being priced in need to now get priced out, right? And there are there are there is a small chance now according to the markets that they won't even cut in November. Um, it's only like, you know, a few percent chance, but there is there is that at least discussion going on. And there's even a, a, a zero percent chance, according to the markets at this point, that you'll even get a 50 basis point rate cut. It's basically the conversation right now is, is it a 25 basis point rate cut or do they just pause um, and, and not do anything? And, and, you know, you have to wonder if you were only looking at real GDP, which is still trending around three percent annualized. And, you know, if you're looking at the labor market and you're like, well, I mean, layoffs are still low. The unemployment rate's back down to 4.1%. If things really are not so bad, as Powell claims, then why why rush cutting, you know? Especially considering the inflation issue. I mean, like, there's always a chance that we get another wave of inflation. Right now, I'm in the camp that you could get a second wave of inflation. But if you do, I don't think it's going to be this year, right? I mean, I think it would be you know, maybe out late 2025 or, you know, 2026, if you get another wave of inflation. 
I think in the short term, the more likely outcome is you see, you know, continued disinflation um, rather than continued, you know, reacceleration of inflation. But I, you have to wonder, you know, like if 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 this is all true, right? If if I mean, if real GDP is still trending at three percent, the unemployment rate is where it is, and assuming the Fed is not a a predictive body but a reactionary body, where they react to the data and not try to do things by predicting what they think is going to happen, which no one can really do, then what's the rush, right? What's the rush to 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 cut rates as aggressively? And so in this case, I, I would say, look, I mean. If, if the 50 basis point rate cut is enough to get things moving again, then you would expect Bitcoin to break through here. Because the other way to think about it is, you know, last cycle, it took about, you know, three rate cuts before Bitcoin broke the lower high structure. It took 75 basis points of rate cuts out of the 225, right? Out of the 225. This time... So far, we've gotten 50 out of the 550. You know, I mean, the the, the Fed funds rate the, at the at its terminal rate was you know five and a half percent. So so far, we've gotten you know 50 basis points out of 550. Last time, it took 75 basis points out of 225 before Bitcoin broke the lower high structure. Okay, so I, I guess the question is is like, does that matter, or it, perhaps the market is more forward looking? today than it was back then i think this week actually this week should tell us a lot so next week when we do this video we can look back at this week and say well this is what happened right either bitcoin goes up uh into the trend line like it did around this time last cycle after the lower highs began after gold broke out or and it breaks through right or it just gets rejected and it, and it goes down again. If it gets rejected and goes down again, then it doesn't, I mean, it's just something we deal with, right? I mean, it just means that we're more likely over here and then we're just going to need some more rate cuts before Bitcoin can really get back on track. If we can break through it now, then it might mean the Fed doesn't need to cut so much and that perhaps the economy can, can continue turning along for at least some time before further interest rate cuts are, are actually needed. In the short term, right? In the short term, there are some obvious things that Bitcoin has to get past. Um, and, you know, this going back to the shorter time frames I was mentioning earlier, you know, Bitcoin has this habit of, of you know, doing this where it'll it'll set some lows, right? And then late, sometime later, it'll it'll sort of back test that and then get rejected. Um, we, we've seen it a number of times, actually. I mean, it even happened right here, right? Where you essentially you set some lows for a while that Bitcoin holds as support, right? And then at some point, Bitcoin falls below it. And then later on, Bitcoin rallies back up to it. Okay. And then here you set the lower the 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 higher lows again, and then we fell through it, and then eventually Bitcoin rallies back up to it, gets rejected. And even here, the the rejection occurred again right i mean it's it's interesting i mean it's i know it's just ta and i gotta be honest with you guys i don't put a lot of faith in the whole ta stuff um you know like drawing lines on the chart as much as i do it i i, I think momentum is important um the, the 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 line drawing i mean obviously there's something you know there's something there i would suppose but i think the counterpoint is that you know and i think this is where where where, where people can go sort of not understand my view on it. They're like, well, if you're drawing the line, you can see the clear resistance levels. Like, why do you not put as much faith in it? Because again, like, I mean, at some point, Bitcoin could just break through it. Like, it doesn't matter. And then we just ignore it and we move on to something else or it gets rejected again. And we're like, all right, there's something there. But again, it's all after the fact that you can go back and, and say that's the reason. It's a lot of times it's hard to say it beforehand, right? So in the short term, I don't know. I mean, maybe Bitcoin's already broken through it with this recent rally. I haven't actually looked. But, you know, if you if you sort of draw this trend line here, if you look at some of these higher lows, you can see that Bitcoin is currently retesting it. Now, the reason I don't point this stuff out that frequently is because there is a really high probability that by the time I even publish this video, Bitcoin has already broken through here, right? And it, it completely makes the analysis void. So I don't really think there's a lot of merit into trend lines like this. But I'm just saying... In the short term, if Bitcoin cannot durably get past 64K, 
then you could then you know you could then argue that all right well maybe it is more like what we saw you know back over here after the first rate cut where you got a two week rally and then it was bled for three weeks after that and then the fourth week after that you got another green week which this cycle potentially would just correspond to another rate cut right so i would say in the short term bitcoin needs to get above 64k hold it as support if it can do that then it it definitely would favor going back up to this trend line and the thing about this trend line at the top of the range is that we actually haven't tested it in a while right i mean we tested it in in march and then in april and then in may and in june and in july but we did not actually test it in august we did not test it in september so you know is october you know, normally a green month. Is it possible that we could test it in October after not testing it for a while? Yeah, it's possible. So that's where I think we should look, right? So if Bitcoin can get past 64K and then hold 64K as support, then I would argue it would favor going back up to that trend line there at the very least, right? I mean, breaking through it is another matter, obviously breaking through it's another matter but it would at least it would at least favor you know revisiting it right i mean back over here in 2019 you can actually see that i mean bitcoin rallied and actually set a lower high in october and then it was the following year where it finally broke through you see that but even in that case that green week that took us back to the lower high structure didn't occur until later on in October, right? You know, the, the, the last couple of weeks of October is, is when that actually occurred. So we'll keep an eye on that. You know, we'll certainly keep an eye on that. In the short term, I, I think the 200-day SMA is important. If I'm not mistaken, I, I do believe we are above it right this second. Um, but let's go double check. The 200-day SMA is at 63,000, about 63.6K. So we are slightly above it now. So I would also look to that in the short term, right? So short term, this is what Bitcoin needs to hold as support, the 200-day estimate. If it can do that, I would say it favors Bitcoin rallying back up to the top of this trend line, which hasn't been visited in a while. If 64K is rejected, right? If I mean, if, if Bitcoin just gets rejected here um, and, and we go back down, then I, I, I still think there's a, a completely viable path that we're on. It just takes us back to what happened after the first rate cut in, in 2019. So... And the other thing, too, I mean, and, and this is kind of the, uh, you know, and we've talked about this a lot. If you go look at, at Ethereum, right, when you look at, at, at ETH, it's been interesting because, you know, while Bitcoin has been doing pretty well, Ethereum is still well below its bull market support band. And you have to imagine that if Bitcoin rallies back up to the lower high structure in October, it would seem like Ethereum could at least... I'm not asking much, right? I mean, if Bitcoin, if, if again, if, if Bitcoin does that, it would seem that Ethereum could at least test the 21 week EMA, right? Now, if Bitcoin can't do that, then, I mean, like if Bitcoin just gets rejected at 64, then I, I think it's going to be another several weeks probably before Ethereum can even get back to its bull market support band. Um, but we'll see. I mean, you can see last year, it was actually around October, uh, later October, that, that Ethereum actually rallied back up to the bull market support band. Um, and actually broke through it in, in late October. So I would say at least keep that on, on your radar. I think in the short term, right? In the short term, there's obviously been a little bit of momentum here for Bitcoin. Um, you know, and I was looking at this earlier, right? If you look at like the four hour, right? There's obviously been a lot of momentum here. Bitcoin is is back testing this right now. We'll see if we can get through. I imagine the RSI is getting pretty heated on the four hour. Um, yeah, it's getting pretty heated right here. So... We'll see if, you know, we'll see if Bitcoin can break through this. If not, if not, then, you know, I'll probably do a dubious speculation video sometime in the middle of the week where we'll, we'll continue to follow this up before the, the, the video the following week. Um, but that's where we stand, guys. I mean, that's where we stand with the market. And I don't have a crystal ball, right? I can't tell you what's going to happen. I will say, I will say that I think that if, and I've said this all year, I mean, I've really, I mean, I've said this for like two years. If there is to be a larger drop in the market, I think it would occur, you know, as Bitcoin dominance is closer to 
right? And I've said that for a long time. And the reason why that's important is because it allows you to have exposure to something in the cryptoverse, the king, right? Bitcoin. And saying, you know what? Yeah, it's possible that alts do okay, but they're probably only going to do well if Bitcoin does well, right? And I still think we're in that phase, even though there have been some rate cuts. There's been, a, you know, there's been 50 basis points, but we still haven't seen QE and it's only 50 basis points, right? So I would still say where I, where I think we're still in the phase where if all if, if alts do well, it's only because Bitcoin did well first, for the most part. There's going to be some alts that, that, that go against that trend, but... If Bitcoin does well, then alts can do well. But if if Bitcoin doesn't do well and gets rejected again, right? And if it just comes back down, that's where alts get annihilated, right? And that's why you see Bitcoin's basically just been slightly, you know, trending down very slightly for about half a year. And during that entire time, if you overlay, you know, Bitcoin dominance on this chart, Bitcoin dominance has been going up. Right. So, I mean, you can see that, that that there's a capital rotation from alts to Bitcoin. And even though there's been that rotation, Bitcoin USD has been putting in lower highs. Right. So 60 percent, I, I think, will be a very important level uh, for Bitcoin dominance. And again, I, I do think we're going to reach it before the end of the year. Second week of January at the absolute latest. That's my base case um, is that my base case is before the end of the year. Right. If it doesn't happen by the end of the year, I would say second week of January at the latest. And if it doesn't happen by then, I would probably be inclined to say it's not going to happen. Um, but that's where I stand right now. I mean, I, in the short term, I, I think we're going to see dominance go up. And the interesting thing about dominance is the main time it seems to go up recently is when Bitcoin goes down, not when Bitcoin goes up. So, I mean, that's a little concerning, right? I mean, if, if, if Bitcoin dominance theoretically needs to go to 60%, which it doesn't have to, and it mainly goes up on on Bitcoin tumps and not Bitcoin rallies. Then, um, yeah, at least have to put that in your back of your mind. But we'll see. I mean, it's obviously a lot. I mean, you can make make all sorts of predictions when Bitcoin's up as much as it is in the last four hours. Uh, and and I know a lot of people are excited. So we'll see. You know, we'll see what happens this week and and if it's following sort of the the time based component of 2019. About six or seven months, it's time to break through. Or if it's just more so tied to monetary policy, you get a rate cut, you get a two week rally. And then you cool off for a few more weeks and then you get another rally. But that's the important point, right? I don't think anyone knows whether we are more so here or here. But the great thing, right? The great thing about it, and this is what I've said, like no one really knows. If you believe in the dominance view, then it allow, it has allowed you to sort of stay Bitcoin heavy over altcoin heavy over the last few years. And that's what, you know, that's the point. You know, I think a lot of people say, well, what's the point of Bitcoin dominance? You know, I mean, it, 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 the whole point of it, you know, for those who haven't caught on for the last several years was that it, it gives you exposure to the upside, but it also minimizes your downside risk, right? So even in the case, even in the case that we are here, there's still going to be a decent chance that there'll be another rally in a few weeks, right? After another rate cut. Um, so, yeah. That's where we stand. Thank you guys for tuning in. Um, again, if you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe, give the video a thumbs up. And again, check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. See you guys next time. Bye.